Hello, everybody. My name is Akiba Leesman. I'm the CEO of Mako Mining. What I'm going to discuss with you today is what we are doing in northern Nicaragua. Uh, the way that I'd like to describe it is that we're doing three things. First and foremost, we have built what is now the highest grade open pit mine uh, in the world. Started mining uh, from this open pit in the early part of 2020. And our plant uh, has recently been commissioned in the early part of March in 2021. Uh, so we are ramping up production. And we anticipate being in commercial production at 500 tons per day. Uh, but secondly, uh, we made a discovery a couple of kilometers to the south of our mine, an area called Las Conchitas. And we have commissioned in a US $8.5 million exploration program uh, to go and prove out a secondary deposit to the south of our San Albino mine, such that we can be mining this at 1,000 tons a day, both San Albino and Las Conchitas together, sometime at the very end of 2022, so uh, nearly two years uh, from today. And thirdly, and most importantly in my mind about our company, is that we do think that we're sitting on an orogenic gold mining camp. We currently have about 188 square kilometers of land under our belt. And the objective, in part from that US $8.5 million exploration program that we started this year, is that we aim to find additional deposits across what we believe to be a mining district. We have about 23 kilometers of untested strike uh, on our ground, uh, and we aim to systematically go and find additional deposits in the San Albino uh, Murray district in northern Nicaragua. Now, to get us to this point, uh, we've raised uh, an aggregate of approximately uh, US $60 million uh, that was done in two tranches of debt, uh, one to the controlling shareholder. There is a controlling shareholder, private equity and hedge fund group called Wexford Capital, uh, which currently owns about 56% of the issue and outstanding stock. Uh, they are also a US $15 million debt provider to the company. We've also raised a little bit of outside debt to a group called Nabari uh, Capital that have put in an additional US $6 million. So there's been $21 million uh, of debt that has been raised at the company level. In addition, US $40 million of equity has gone in into uh, $20 million tranches uh, that were complete in 2019 and 2020 to get us to the fully funded status uh, that we're in right now. Uh, as the mine is uh, up and running, we anticipate being in a cash flow positive uh, situation imminently, and again, declaring commercial production uh, in early Q2 of uh, this year. We currently have um, 656 million shares uh, outstanding. Uh, our stock at the end of February was at uh, Canadian 33 cents. Uh, this morning, and this, is, this presentation is being recorded in the middle of uh, March, our stock uh, traded at uh, US 38 cents uh, this evening. Uh, so we have just under uh, US $200 million uh, market cap. That pie chart that you see on the right is on a fully diluted basis, but on an issue and outstanding basis, Wexford owns approximately 56% of the stock. I personally uh, own between the shares that I've purchased in the open market and my options just under 5%. Uh, of the company. Our second largest shareholder is a very well-known individual named Paul Stevens. Uh, he's a scion out in Silicon Valley. Uh, he co-founded the Robertson Stevens uh, Investment uh, Bank. Great shareholder to, to have. So we have a very tight shareholder base and they've been very supportive to get the company uh, to the position uh, that it is uh, today. A little bit about our operating team. Uh, so Jesse Munoz, who's our chief operating officer, uh, he and his family used to own and operate a full service engineering procurement and construction management firm. We've onboarded all his key employees as employees of Mako when I took over as full-time CEO in the summer of 2019. So everybody from, from Jesse, obviously our COO, our general manager, mine engineers, uh, product, uh, project geologists, uh, metallurgists, all have been on board as our key operating team. So I've worked with Jesse for the better part of the last dozen years, a, a truly uh, impeccable operator. And it's, uh, we're very fortunate to have uh, him and his crew uh, being the, the operating team behind Mako. Uh, we've recently hired a new CFO, uh, Millie Paredes, who's been excellent. She's uh, hit the ground uh, running. And this was a, an important hire uh, as we transitioned from a project uh, developer uh, to an, a mining company. So now we're, we're kind of supplementing our, our business with, with real hires, uh, with the ability to actually manage 
uh, Mako as a, uh, as a, as a real uh, mining company going forward. Now, a little bit about some of the drill holes that we've, we've put out. These are truly spectacular. And I just wanna put this as a frame of reference. This is an open pit mining operation, at least initially. And you can see some of the results uh, that we've hit over here, 50 grams, 0.8 meters true width. That was just three meters from surface. This is an area that, uh, that we can be mining uh, tomorrow if we wanted to. You can see over in September 26, we hit 51 grams over five meters true width. That was only about 20 meters from surface. This is the type of material that we're taking out of the ground right now and processing through our currently scoped at a 500 ton per day uh, carbon and leach processing plant uh, that's uh, been commissioned uh, and again will be in commercial production uh, imminently. So a little bit about San Albino, our project that we have in Northern Nicaragua. It's about a five hour drive from the capital city uh, of Managua, very safe jurisdiction, beautiful country to, uh, to visit. Um, in terms of uh, local population, I I've been very impressed with the local work ethic, the ability to, to have trained skilled labor to go and run a mining project. We are actually in an enviable uh, region and uh, geography where we have access to, to people uh, that are there to, to be able to build mining projects uh, such as uh, San Albino. Now, again, we've been mining since last year. This is an open pit mine. Now we've put out a, a, a resource that indicated a, a 9.56 gram measure and indicated open pit grade. But some of the results that are coming out of this open pit are truly extraordinary. You can see in the first two and a half inches, we mined an additional uh, bench uh, after we put out this, uh, this slide, mining 15 gram material fully diluted. That's a half ounce material that's being taken out of the mine, inclusive of the waste, and then being put into our mill right now. Truly unprecedented in current modern open pit mining to have grades like this. We are off the charts relative to some of our, our peer group. And you can see some of our open pit mining competitors. You have a couple in the, the eight gram range, but right now we are mining nearly twice the grade of the second highest open pit mine on the list. Now, I don't expect, expect this to be a half ounce mine for the, the mine life. We, we do expect it to be in and around 10 grams, but still even at 10 grams, we are by far the highest grade open pit mine in the world. With respect to our MI resource, uh, we ranked second on the list, but we took a very conservative approach to how we were modeling the grade in that resource estimate. Uh, if, um, if the number one on the list took the same uh, levels of detail that we did on our resource, I can, I can state emphatically that we would be of higher grade than even the highest one on this list of measured and indicated grades in terms of resources. Now, what really excites us is that this property is underexplored. There's a whole history as to why that was the case. Again, I took over as full-time CEO in the summer of 2019. The original discovery from San Albino happened in 2009, and very little drilling actually went in. The light blue bar chart is the cumulative meters drilled over at San Albino, the mine that we are mining right now. The dark blue that Las Conchitas exploration asset a couple kilometers to the south. So San Albino had a fair bit of drilling to get to an initial resource stage in 2012. And Las Conchitas had just a tiny bit. But after that resource came out in 2012 under previous management, nothing was spent on exploration. Nothing was spent on project development exploration. Nothing was spent on greenfields exploration. When the management change happened in 2019, we started to unlock the code of what was at San Albino. We increased drilling to get a better infill program, to get a better control around that resource estimate. That's that light blue going up in 2019. And likewise, we commissioned an exploration program to go and find more stuff on regional targets, the dark blue. This year, this summer, sometime around June, July, August of this year, will be the first time in the company's history that we're gonna be putting drill holes in some of the regional targets that we have elsewhere on our 188 square kilometer land package. When I took over, we took a strategic objective to consolidate the ground in and around us. We acquired the Puerto Rios uh, property uh, directly to the north on strike of San Albino, the strike the deposit is going from the southwest to the northeast in the direction of the text that you see on the Corona de Oro belt uh, over there. 
And likewise, we had a concession granted to us called La Segoviana, and we expect to have another concession granted to us to the east sometime later uh, this year. So ground was consolidated. We did some prospecting on all of the ground, and we have found gold sitting at surface, exposed, sometimes grading multi ounces as far away as 20 kilometers from our mine. Uh, we've developed at least 150 separate targets over at our properties, and we aim to systematically go after and explore uh, each one of those targets over time, over years, over decades potentially, to find out additional deposits that will then be able to be processed through the infrastructure that we've developed, initially scoped out at 500 tons a day, uh, but in a couple of years time to be running it at 1,000 tons a day. Now, the geology that we have is somewhat unique. When you're talking about narrow vein high-grade mines, usually they're, they're vertical in nature. Usually they're underground for a variety of reasons geologically. I won't go into in the, in the context of this presentation, but we have shallow dipping veins. Now, that does a few things. Most importantly, it makes it amenable to open pit mining. We actually don't need to open up a lot of ground to go and access a lot of those veins. So for very limited CapEx, in the context of building the infrastructure, doing the pre-strip, pre doing all the exploration work that we had for the infill program and over at, uh, at Las Conchitas, working capital, paying people salaries, concession taxes and land acquisitions, everything soup to nuts. It cost us US $60 million to get us up and running at our company. If this was going to be an underground mine, that could potentially be an order of magnitude higher in terms of upfront capital. Likewise, if we're going to be finding additional deposits elsewhere in our property, uh, it's going to be a very limited startup cost to develop those deposits that can eventually be trucked, and, and we're not limited by distance in terms of these grades, to our infrastructure uh, processed with very limited in incremental capital uh, that it will take to go and feed the mill at eventually the thousand ton a day scenario. So again, to sum things up, we are doing three things. We have built the highest grade open pit mine in the world. We are in production. We're going to be in commercial production imminently. By the time that you see this presentation in April, we will be in commercial production, generating cash flow. We have commissioned a US $8.5 million exploration program such that we're going to be taking our relatively small resource over at San Albino with the idea of expanding it over the course of the next two years such that we can be processing it 1,000 tons a day, doubling production from there. And thirdly, and probably most importantly, we do think that we're sitting on a gold mining camp. As part of that US $8.5 million exploration program that's going to be spent this calendar year, for the first time in the company's history, we are going to be putting in exploration holes on some of those 150 targets that we've developed on those 188 square kilometers with the anticipation of finding additional deposits that can eventually be mined at that thousand ton a day uh, scenario, really for the foreseeable future. Uh, so with that, uh, I'll say goodbye and I look forward to seeing you at the uh, conference. Take care.